Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. Now in this short lesson I want to look at five opening principles. Now as every game of backgammon starts with the opening, this is a good area for practice. So you're moving checkers with thought. You're thinking about the why behind the move as well as the what. Now, like most of my videos, this will be short, so it's by no means comprehensive. If you want a more extensive accounting of opening replies, then I suggest you read Mitch's opening concepts or look at Jeremy Beguy's article online. Nevertheless, I hope you find this useful and that these principles guide you towards making better decisions over the board. Now, in this first position, white has a 6-4 to play. Green won the opening roll of a 2-5, split the back check it and plays one down to the 8 point. These are also all taken from money games. So how do you play 6-4 here as white? Now the correct move here is to hit 13 to three, and this is the first principle, hit in the opening game. Now hitting in the opening game is often correct as your opponent hasn't yet developed his home board and therefore if you get hit back, you will not have any trouble re-entering. The hit also takes away half of your opponent's role, so it's more difficult for him to build and create structure on the other side of the board. And very importantly, it prevents him from easily making an advanced anchor. So without hitting here, if green rolled a 2, then he could make his anchor. And then that would mean you wouldn't be able to hit him as white. And of course, he would also have a safe landing point if you were to pick up another checker later in the game. Let's look at the second position where white has a 3-1 to play. Now here, by a large margin, it's right to make the five point. The second principle, make home board points in the opening game. Now locking up your five point or the opponent's five point is a huge asset. Like three one is the best opening roll. Now by making your own five point, it of course prevents your opponent making it, making the golden anchor. And if your opponent did make that point, it would hugely reduce your ability to carry out a prime or a blitz later in the game. So it is cancelling out two of your game plans. Here you make the five point. Often you need a very good reason to not make the five point in fact. If we compare those two positions that we've just looked at. Now on the left there with the 6-4, we of course have the option to make the two point instead of hitting. But the two point is a deep point and it's not as valuable as a higher points in white's home board, such as a five and four. And also importantly, it would be a point made behind the opponent's front checker and therefore lose blocking potential. So on the left, it's simply better to hit. Whereas on the right, you do have the option of hitting with a three. But making a five point is more valuable there because it's a higher point, it's a stronger point, and a strong point usually overrides a hitting play. Now what you will notice here is that the two principles I've mentioned so far come into contention, into dispute. And backgammon is often the case that you have to weigh up concepts. You have to decide whether it's better to hit or whether it's better to make a point and juggle those and decide on the best outcome. And one way to do that is to think about whether you're making a higher point, whether you're making a lower point, and how valuable the hit is. So certainly when you get those decisions, weigh up the two principles um, aforementioned. Also, you get opportunities in the opening game to make double hits. And this is something definitely worth thinking about because they can be often misplayed. So here on the left, green has rolled a 2-1 and then white has a 4-1. And here it's right to make a double hit on the left and anything else would be an error. Whereas on the right hand side, making a double hit would be an error and it's better to only hit once on the right hand side. Now the reason for only hitting once on the right hand side is 
the hit also slots a point which you want to make on a later roll as white. So by hitting and leaving the blot on the four point, if you're not then hit back, you will have direct sixes, fours and twos to cover. And there you have more than 27 out of 36 rolls to cover that four point. So certainly hitting and leaving the blot on the point you want to make is certainly something to think about in determining whether to hit twice or even to hit once or not. So here you can compare these positions and also you can go into XG and you can play around. This video really is an introduction to some things you should be thinking about in the opening game. But of course, you can spend a lot more time yourself, independent study, thinking about variations to these positions to really deepen your understanding further. In this position, white has a 5-4 to play. Now, principle three is split your back checkers. So here, 24 to 20, 13 to 8, anything else would be a mistake. Now, the main reason why you split your back checkers at the start of a game is because you want an advanced anchor. So here you split to the 20 point, hoping to make that point the golden anchor on a subsequent roll. Also, of course, if Green and hits you on their five point, you have the option to hit them back and you would send them further back in the race. And backgammon is ultimately a race and gaining 20 pips is certainly significant. So here, if he hits you back, it's not the end of the world. But if he doesn't, then you have the opportunity of making a high anchor in your opponent's home board and cancelling out some of his game plans, as mentioned before. Here, White has a 4-1 to play. Now here, we can see the comparison between the two players. And this leads us to principle four, is to try to not strip your eight points. So really you want more than two checkers on your eight point. I've done a video previously on freezing checkers that you may want to check out, which goes into that concept in more detail. But here it's better to not hit on the three point and simply play four to one, 13 to eight, or even moving the two back checkers up, which is quite borderline. And on the right, again, it's better to not hit. Now, there are times, of course, in the opening game where you do strip your eight point, but these are mainly to make a new home board point. And often hitting off a heavier six point is better because it's a more efficient use of the stack of checkers on your six point. Now, of course, like all the rules in backgammon, they only hold true about 95% of the time. And there will be exceptions that you will find, but through exceptions, you will learn more. And that's the importance of looking at these positions as a starting point and then playing around with them further to yield fresh insights. Here, for instance, it is correct to hit with the four on the left-hand side. Even though on the left hand side we would be stripping the eight point, we prefer to hit on a point we want to make ourselves. So eight to four, again we're slotting a point there that we hope to make on another roll. And of course the ace plays well by splitting the back checkers. By making something like a 13 to eight play on the left, it is just much too static and passive. So here the hit is right on the left hand side because green has stepped up to what is a higher point in our board. Whereas on the right, it's not correct to hit because hitting on the three point is not quite as good as hitting on the four point because a four point has much more value once we make it. So again, these considerations of where you're hitting on your home board are very significant as to why the hit might be correct or not. And finally, let's look at this one, white to play a 6-5. So white started with a 6-5 and green rolled a 6-3. And now we have another 6-5 to play it as white. Now, principle five is about game plan. Again, I've done a video on this, so please check that out. 
race when ahead so backgammon is ultimately a race your objective is to get all your checkers around the board into your home board and then bear them off faster than your opponent so after starting with a 6-5 and gaining 11 pips continue the racing game plan as white by escaping your final back checker now here of course you have the option of hitting twice as white and carrying out a blitz but then you leave yourself open to a lot of returns and that will lead to a more complicated game. The blitz is also quite weak because you do not have many checkers in the zone. Here, it's better to race. You do not want that checker to get stuck back. If green makes a bar point, you could end up with some difficulty extricating that last checker. So simply adhere to the game plan and get that checker out. So there we have it, five opening principles for you to think about in the opening game. Number one, hit in the opening game. Number two, make home board points. The higher, the better. Number three, split your back checkers, hoping for an advanced anchor to roll out some of your opponent's game plans. Number four, try not to strip your eight point. And number five, the race when ahead. Follow the game plan. So there you are. Do kind of use this as a starting point. Definitely read opening concepts by Michi, opening replies by Jeremy Bagai, and I'll try to link that into a video description. And good luck. Keep practicing. Think consciously about your moves over the board. And best of luck. All the best. See you next Wednesday. Goodbye.